Hey, I'm Austin Butler, and tonight I'm gonna show you how to make a napkin rose. Oh gosh, how much allure can Austin Butler radiate by simply folding an ordinary napkin into a rose? Believe it or not, it's enough to captivate anyone. His attempts to convince fans of his enduring shyness since childhood only adds fuel to the fire of his appeal. I would whisper to my mom and say, could you order this for me? And she would order for me at a restaurant. And I was very, very shy. I'd always be a wallflower to party. Ah, countless hearts yearn to be the one to help this seemingly wallflower bloom. Yet Austin remains elusive, captivating his fans not just with his film roles, but also with his promotional campaigns for Yves Saint Laurent. Strong, proud, free, nuanced. We owe the emergence of this modern-day Apollo on the Olympus of women's hearts to one casting manager who discovered the then 12-year-old talent at the Orange County Fair and offered him a start in the entertainment industry. I could be the first American James Bond. I would do it with a British accent. Unsurprisingly, Butler thoroughly enjoys being an actor. And then somehow I ended up on, on the set and it just seemed like a, I always loved movies and it seemed like a fun thing to do. and and. Something about that process of seeing the entire machine and how filmmaking works and, and being around other actors and suddenly I felt like, oh, I found my tribe. How old were you, 12? I was 12. He soon started taking acting classes to nurture his burgeoning talent. And here we are today. I, I've never had a real job other than acting. The first time I was ever paid as an actor was on Hannah Montana. While his peers were serving coffee and working in flower shops, he was simply being handsome. Once in half an episode about an unsuccessful date with Hannah Montana, the little tramp, the other time in an entire episode as a bachelor hot guy ready for new heartfelt adventures with iCarly. He even played the main role of a cool independent guy in the Carrie Diaries, sharing Carrie's first kiss. The secret to success in these roles? Undoubtedly, his killer looks. I also don't really have a skincare routine, <laughs> you know. Sometimes put some oil on the face. Nice. You know, get a good oil. Nice. I always feel luxurious when I do that. Nice. But I don't do it all the time. Okay, just on special. Yeah, yeah just on special occasions. Special occasions. <laughs> From his earliest days, the roles of a young heartthrob and the image of a romantic teen perfectly prepared him to portray perhaps the most universally desired man of the 20th century, Elvis Presley. Austin, with his Finnish ancestry and initially cold blonde appearance, transformed into a raven-haired brunette, mastered Elvis's speaking and singing style, and even followed Ryan Gosling's diet to gain weight, and voila. Uh, but, um... One says that when Austin Butler shakes his hips in uh, Elvis's first gig as a full-blown rock and roller, it's like watching two stars being born. <laughs> that, was, that was time out. Butler's Elvis became a global sensation and marked a real breakthrough in his acting career. He won the BAFTA, Golden Globe, and Satellite Awards for Best Actor, and was nominated for an Oscar and a Screen Actors Guild Award. This role catapulted him to the status of one of Hollywood's most sought-after rising stars. Another role, as a charismatic blonde biker with lavish hair who rides through Chicago with Tom Hardy, involved in criminal activities, only solidified his image as an irresistible heartthrob. What truly astonished everyone was his role as Harkonnen in Dune Part 2. To fully embody this main villain and antagonist, Austin underwent significant transformations, both externally and internally. I did a makeup test in London, and then I looked in the mirror, and suddenly I didn't have any hair, and my teeth were black. And you were like, damn, I look good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Austin pumped his body, went bald, thankfully with the help of a bald cap that took hours to apply, extending all the way to his eyebrows, and began to dig into the psychology of his character. Those are the characters that can be hard to justify their actions, um, but yet humanity is full of those types of people, so, uh, so shining a light on that part of the human condition is, is a fascinating thing to explore. His diligent studies have certainly paid off, the excitement is palpable, with everyone vying to praise Austin first. Yet, it seems he remains blissfully unaware of the buzz surrounding his persona. Uh, the scale is dynamic and Butler's portrayal is wildly hypnotic and menacing. This is greatness on every level. Wow. That's wild. It appears that not only do good girls fall for bad guys, but so do top producers and directors. 
How else could you explain his casting in Ari Aster's upcoming contemporary western black comedy, Eddington? By the way, he'll be starring alongside Joaquin Phoenix, Pedro Pascal, and Emma Stone. Clearly, his selection wasn't due to his penchant for bitter chocolate with cold oatmeal milk, nor his habit of journaling his thoughts in poems. At first glance, Austin Butler seems like the quintessential sweet, charismatic man. He's passionate about cooking, and had he not pursued acting, he would have certainly become a chef, enough to make any heart flutter. He's a fan of old-school film photography, and even has a dedicated darkroom in his house for developing pictures. The moment he is most proud of, it's sure to melt your heart with its tenderness. Being in Cannes for the first time and my dad had never been outside the country. Wow. We hadn't seen each other yet and he, he had just arrived and I, I look at my father and he's on the carpet in a tuxedo <laughs> uh, in oh Cannes and I just God. thought this is so surreal. He harbors deep warmth for his late mother who passed away from cancer when he was just 23. The immense grief struck him profoundly nearly shattering him. This profound sorrow led him to reassess his values and even question his future in acting. And I started sinking into this deeper and deeper depression. As I stopped working and, and my identity and I wasn't getting the roles that I wanted and the opportunities weren't there for the types of things that I wanted to do. And so I, I really thought maybe I'll just quit. And Austin spent about six to eight months in the state, ignoring his agent's calls and relying on his savings. He even started to believe he wasn't cut out for acting. However, he climbed out of this depressive state with his agent's insistence, who compelled him to record a video audition for the Broadway production of The Iceman Cometh alongside Denzel Washington. Realizing that his mother had invested too much in him for him to just give up also played a crucial role in his recovery. I owe her uh, for everything because she quit her job and she drove me to auditions and uh, took me to acting classes. and through going through that process, that's that's what then allowed me to start to break the show. While he was performing in The Iceman Cometh, Quentin Tarantino cast him as the infamous killer Tex Watson in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. This role marked the beginning of a return to normalcy for Austin. Quentin gave me the part. I flew back and did the play on a Tuesday and I was just floating on cloud nine because I, I was about to get to work with my hero. If you've made it this far and are ready to be overwhelmed with emotion, hold on just a moment. There is still a little fly in this handsome ointment. It lies in his friendship with Timothy Chalamet. These two cutie pie buddies have been inseparable since they first met on the set of Doom Part 2, and they continually sing each other's praises in interviews. You meet someone that uh, by destiny, by the destiny of the script, <laughs> you know you're going to have to work with yeah. intimately, and you go, know, oh, okay, this is a not only an amazing talent, but a great guy, which is hard to find, right <laughs> hand in hand. From the first table zoom, I was just uh, blown away. Mine's Timothy Chalamet. Whew! If you're not clued in on what's up with Timothy Chalamet, check out our video right here. And we really hope Hollywood doesn't gain another narcissist. After all, as the old saying goes, you become who you hang out with. And Austin, just like Timothy, knows what it's like to have everyone from teenage girls to esteemed ladies completely smitten. And he plays right into it. He's definitely developed a taste for luxury and splendor too. It's my new favorite watch. I'm loving that Cartier watch. And all those stories about how shy he is and how he frets when bad red carpet photos of him end up all over the internet, especially after spending 10 minutes breaking down his most famous outfits, just comes off like he's flirting with the audience. And let's be real, when you're 28 and out of nowhere Quentin Tarantino calls you up saying you're perfect for his movie, that's enough to blow anyone's mind. Without a doubt, everyone has the right to choose how to live their best life. Yet, sometimes, celebrities forget that they are behavior examples and role models for many of us, especially for teenagers. Well, maybe they just don't care about it. Regardless, they carry a weight of influence over the values they promote. Above all, these values should not include narcissism, toxicity, or abuse. Otherwise, there are no complaints for Austin. In your opinion, who else is a sweet, handsome guy with a bit of bitterness? Write your answers in the comments and we will definitely make our next video about them just for you.